studies about bridging, you know, the, the short, rocky, little rocky to big rocky. Uh, we've seen the options for Panikin. We've seen the options that come into the southern part of Logan. And all of those were commissioned by council and went to council meetings and were voted down or, or not carried. So it was always their, their baby. Nothing's changed. Now, uh, to move a motion the way it was, the first part of the motion was to change our planning scheme. The way the planning schemes work is council is the local planning authority. It feeds into the state government as does the Ipswich plan, the Gold Coast plan, all the other councils, they feed into it and we get that higher order document. Yes, state is responsible for a higher order document. The South East Queensland Infrastructure Planning Program is the higher order document, but it's fuelled by Redlands, by Gold Coast, by Logan, by Ipswich, and that's how the whole thing works. So when they say that they don't believe a water-based transport system is viable into the future, they need to change that line in their planning scheme that feeds into the state planning scheme and we work together. It is a partnership. This is a big project, there's no doubt about that. Uh, the second part of the motion was to do consultation. Well, consultation is fine. We don't have ready access the way Redland City Council does to the database. Council, if they were serious about consultation and asking the question, they would just put a questionnaire in with, a, with the rates notice. Nice and easy. And they'd get every stakeholder. What they have decided to do was, state government, you should consult. Well, guess what? We don't have that database. We could probably get it, but it's problematic for us. Council is the closest to the people. That's where you get the best community engagement, the best consultation. And then the third one, state government, approve, build, and fund the bridge. Well, there's three things that I don't believe are, uh, are taking the right approach. It's a partnership. Yes, we should have skin in the game as a state government. Absolutely, there's nothing sure. But it's a, uh, it's a three-way thing. I think council needs to come to the table. I think that state government needs to come to the table. And more importantly, I think people who live on the Bay Islands need to come to the table. Uh, they're going to see monumental improvements in their life, in their assets value, uh, in uh, the whole structure of, uh, of Moreton Bay. And I think it's important, A, they have a say in it, and B, that they uh, have some contributory uh, component to it. Until we get a real cost on it, though, that we're not going to know um, where that quantum is. But when looking at the islands, uh, there's talk of two things. One is a bridge to Stratty, and the other is a bridge to, uh, to uh, the Rocky Point here. And this one's fraught with danger because while that is the shortest span, there's a lot of infrastructure down here in order to facilitate the people movements, the road corridors and that still have to be formed up on the island to a high scale, to a higher standard, because remember we've got to build it to a population of on Russell Island in the future of somewhere up to around 12,000 people. But look, you've landed here, there's nothing. You're 10 or 15 kilometres from the highway before you even get to where it is you're going to be going. If I was Gold Coast City Council, I couldn't find a single good reason why uh, I would want the Bay Islanders, where I have no connectedness, no financial stake, no association, traipsing through my neck of the woods, building the roads to support that, uh, that movement. Then there was the one sort of across the middle, across uh, through here into the lower part of Redlands. Now again, it's a very long bridge still requires the infrastructure. So from there to there is again, so probably somewhere in the order of five or six, maybe seven kilometres, plus the infrastructure. And again, you need to do quite a power of work here to get the, uh, the through connect. What I do see though, is an option somewhere in the northern part here of Russell, feeding across Panikin or into the new suburb on the south through Scenic. These opportunities, this, this bridge, or this connectedness puts in play three things that I don't believe are valid in the other two scenarios, or both of them. One, public transport. It's very unlikely you'd get any public transport feeding out of this part of uh, Queensland into the islands, to the Bay Islands. I don't believe you'd get much support or movement from the three northern islands who aren't connected by bridge 
onto Russell to then drive that distance to end up here to then end up basically in the middle of nowhere. So those two initiatives aren't working. I don't believe there's a, an opportunity to provide services from here, such as water, sewerage, uh, uh, power runs on that easement, so that would be fine, but uh, telecommunications, and I don't think they'd feed out of these two lower options. Public transport, again, it's very marginal by the time you get down to here to get across to the customer base, so I don't think that's in the mix. What you get with this option is a very real opportunity to run public transport into the Bay Islands. You get a very real opportunity to elevate the water supply that comes out of Stradbroke across to the mainland on almost that alignment, so you get the opportunity to bring that up out of the water. You could then consider running sewerage, because up in the back here there is a sewerage treatment plant which has room for growth, which could actually accommodate the product coming across. So for all of those reasons, that's why I think this northern option is by far the best option. And the one other option that I think is, is probably even more significant is when you look at the barge journey from Maclay into uh, Redland Bay. It's $100, it's approximately uh, uh, an hour, I suppose. By the time it's all said and done, you lose about an hour out of your life. If the bridge were connected here or here, and again, engineers will have to pick the right location. But what you could do is run your barge straight out of there, straight into uh, that top end of Russell Island. They basically do a U-turn and go straight on the bridge. So you go from barge to road to bridge, and that's one third of the journey. You'd imagine that the cost then and the time efficiencies become more viable. The barge can offer a more frequent service, so Maclay then get some benefits through this bridging process and even just for supply of product into and, and on, on the islands there I think is a, a, valid, uh, a valid option. I do think there's still merit and I know this motion went to council once before as I mentioned uh, of linking Lamb Island. I don't believe we can't uh, not link it anymore. I think we must link it uh, into the future. So then Lamb Island gets all the benefits that Maclay get through that connectedness and it, it could be a fairly modest one-lane bridge on a, a signalised process as some of the roadworks are and uh, I think that would serve their needs and provide them a short one-stop on the, on the car so again it brings the vehicle back into play. It enables these islands, this island to become, if you will, uh, the senior island or the, the service island where you can create some employment opportunities on the island, where you can create all of those other things and for this island you get 24 access to health, to education, to lifestyle, to all of the things that they're lacking right now and I think this northern connect brings you into Redland City where there is that affinity, where there is that connection through all areas of, of their life this I think is a bit romantic because it's short and I think it is only because it's short and it's cheap uh, that people look at that. It's cheap only for the part across the water. Every other part of it is expensive and in the longer term doesn't really change the lifestyle and livability of the Bay Islands. I still think they're remote. Not only are they going to be at the end of a, a cul-de-sac, they're at the end of a very long cul-de-sac and a problematic cul-de-sac, one that has a serious disconnect with the mainland that it's connected to. The other option, of course, is uh, bridging Stratty. Uh, I don't support that. The Stradbroke Island or the, the Leave Stratty Unbridged campaign derailed the bridge opportunity for the Bay Islands back in the 80s. I believe it will do it again if we continue. The shortest point is off Kanaipa. Uh, problem here is that land ownership at the end and the height difference between coming from here to here, it's, it's almost going vertical, you're going up a cliff almost, and it's a sand cliff, so there's not a lot of structural integrity there to do that. So I don't think that one works. When you look from here through to here, it's all swamp. So you're trying to get across into a swamp while it's relatively narrow. All of a sudden now you're down at the bottom end looking for some, you know, some firm ground to get across. Relatively short. All of the infrastructure we require, again, down this bottom end of the island to get the traffic flow through. Each one of these squares is five kilometres. 
5, 10, 15, 20, 25 kilometres to get to Dunwich. 30, 35, almost 40 kilometres to get to Point Lookout or to Amity. And most of this, while there appear to be roads on the map, they're mine roads. They're not roads that are regular, everyday traffic roads that we would need to have on the island for conventional traffic. And you talk about surf beaches. Fantastic. We've got swamp from there to there, pretty much. So that's pretty much problematic to get to these surf beaches for fishing or for surfing. You need to go all the way up here to get access to those things. I just think it's fraught with danger. I think it's expensive. Uh, it's bad enough trying to get the money for a bridge. I think the road from here to here would be more expensive than the bridge from there to there when all said and done. I just think it's flawed, it's fraught with danger. I think this has merit. And while it's expensive, and uh, again, I, we can only surmise how much it will be until we get some engineering and we get some decision makers uh, to, to, to draw up the chair, I think the first decision maker needs to be council. I'm happy to be the, the second decision maker. I know that the islands, more particularly Russell Island, needs a bridge. That's why I'm talking about it. That's why I'm pushing the issue. And uh, I know it needs to be a partnership. It's not a council thing. It's not a state thing. It's not uh, something that either one could or should do alone. It's something we need to work through and we need to look at a whole range of revenue streams as to how it might be funded uh, right from the word go. It needs to be done now. At present there are between seven and 8,000 people living out in Moreton Bay. That number is only going to grow. It's going to grow to 22,000. Uh, when that happens I'm not sure. But what I do know is our water-based transport system can't cope when we get too much bigger. Now I don't know when it grinds to a halt is when we get to 10,000 or when we get to 12,000 or 15,000. But what I do know is we are tracking north. The numbers are growing. They're not getting any smaller. The cost of servicing the islands is horrendous. Uh, the Bay Islands, contrary to popular opinion and urban myth, it's not a license to print money. It's not a cash cow. It's a liability. It's a huge liability. Almost everything you do on any of the Bay Islands costs a fortune and it's a, it's a, a, a sum of money that is not uh, borne by or, or triggered by pretty much anywhere else in the city. Parking. Everyone else in the mainland parks the car in their own garage, they take them home. We've got to find parking at each of the ports and we've got to put jetties and terminals at each of the ports. When we pick up a rubbish bin, on any one of the islands, and I'm pointing at Russell, but any one of the islands, the cost penalty is horrendous because you've got a truck that pulls up here, sits on the barge for an hour, does a half dozen streets, goes back to the barge, sits on the barge for an hour, and then goes back to the landfill. That's hugely expensive, incredibly inconvenient, not terribly efficient. Those little things are what cost an awful lot of money for council. To do a kilometre of road resurfacing on the island will cost you quantum dollars more than it does here because you just drive down with your truck, you grade the road, you lay your bitumen. We've got to ship crews over, we've got to ship facil uh, uh, product over to do all of that. It's just incredibly expensive to not do the bridge. I don't believe Redlands can afford it. I don't believe the islands can afford it. It's something that must happen. It's something that will happen one day. The only thing that I'm not certain of is not whether there'll be a bridge, because I'm absolutely certain there will be. The only thing I'm not certain of is the day that they cut a ribbon and someone's driving over it.